Hello, I'm Jocelyn Turner and welcome to this week's edition of Community College News, news for all six NBCC campuses. In today's show, changes are being considered for minimum wage earners and students who had the opportunity to go to work with their parents for National Take Your Kids to Work Day. But first, a pub crawl being organized in St. John is drawing controversy this week. The social event drew an onslaught of criticism on the event's Facebook page. The problem? It's being planned for Remembrance Day. Mike Trusiak reports. Remembrance Day is a time to reflect and recall the sacrifices made by our soldiers. This year in St. John, the college and university students expect to honor fallen soldiers in a different way. In our way, we're doing it a little different. We're going to have our own little ceremony and uh, have drinks with veterans along, uh, along the tour. Jenkins organized the 10th annual Remembrance Day pub crawl through Facebook this year. He never anticipated the backlash that would follow. I mean, everybody thinks, well, it's a pub crawl, then you're going to get completely smashed. Well, for us, it's more of a social event to get out and actually meet a lot of the veterans on the, the pub crawl themselves. And on November 11th, people across the country will gather at their local cenotaph. Despite their views, the pub crawl will go ahead as planned. Students at the NBCC campus in Woodstock feel a pub crawl is an inconsiderate way to honor our veterans. But I figure Remembrance Day is to remember the people that fought for our country and we should remember them in kind of silence, you know. Or I would rather be sitting home to pay my respects to the soldiers who lost their lives. Um, I like the idea of the silence, but I'm not too big on the bar idea. Despite how the public is viewing the event, veterans like Harold Hatfield do not see any real issue with it. The, the important thing is the fact that they are remembering. That, that's the important thing to people like me that left friends over there, and there are friends over there. There, for the grace of God, go I. I was fortunate enough to not be there. The money raised through the controversial event will go to the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 69. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. How would you feel about having your minimum wage salary reduced because you earn tips? Michael McDonald has more on the province's minimum wage consultations. People who work for tips could be earning a lower minimum wage. Restaurant owners are concerned they can't afford to pay servers higher wages. The province is considering changing the rules so that people who earn tips will be paid less than those who do not. New Brunswickers have mixed feelings on the issue. I think it's a good idea, really, because like people who are waitresses do that, they make a lot of money on tips, so that's a big help too. Yes, because we don't make enough money as it is. Everything goes up and we just stay the same and if everything keeps going up, no one's going to be able to afford anything. It depends on your job title. If you have five functions in your job title, then you shouldn't have anything cut. But if you're only doing one title and you're making minimum wage and you're getting five dollars an hour extra, so you're making fifteen dollars an hour for washing dishes, as opposed to somebody who does something else and makes less money with more responsibility, I don't think it's fair in that sense. The New Brunswick government is surveying people's opinions. You can access the survey at gnb.ca slash consultations. The poll will be open until December 14th. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. We'll have more reactions on this story, including those of business owners, next week. Many students celebrate Halloween by participating in a costume contest. In Miramichi, IT system manager James Blanchard created this video of their Halloween celebrations, which you can see in its entirety on the NBCC Facebook page. Here in Woodstock, top prizes went to a zombie, a green man, and a jailbird. Costume winners were awarded gas cards. A door decorating competition was also held at the Woodstock campus on Monday. Classes displayed their creative side in the hopes to win a pizza party. One door featured a live zombie. Student activities coordinator Hillary Stockford was a judge for this competition. We had 11 classes participate, so what we did is we walked through the whole building and um, made notes about each one, the things that stood out to us, and the different things we liked about each one. The winning door design went to the early childhood education class for their creepy design. Miramichi Mayor Jerry Cormier donated $10,000 to the NBCC Foundation. 
Over five years, the city of Miramichi presented the foundation with $50,000. The foundation has already granted more than $600,000 in scholarships and bursaries to students since 2006. The Carleton County Animal Shelter held their largest fundraiser of the year last week. The furball auction featured dinner, dessert, and an auction that would last most of the night. Tony Bourgeois takes us there. People line up at the Knights of Columbus Hall waiting to get in. People young and old came down to the Knights of Columbus Hall for the furball auction. All proceeds from the buffet-style meal and the auction go straight to the shelter. Joanne Reed is the secretary of the shelter and is the master of ceremonies for tonight. She says she's very happy about the turnout for the auction. Usually we run around 175, 180 for the meal and tonight I understand we're expecting over 200, so that's terrific. The door charge is only $20. This includes a full meal and dessert. Shortly after dessert is served, the auction begins. I'm at 20, 20, 250, come along, ladies and gentlemen, 20, 250, we're going to move her along, would you say five? 20, all items in the auction are donated by local retailers, so all profits go directly to the shelter. Lynn Hona, secretary and treasurer of the shelter, says they need every cent from this auction. Yes, we're probably the poorest, poorest, poorest nonprofit in New Brunswick. It costs us approximately 100000 a year to run the shelter, and that's without doing any improvements. That's just baseline, paying the bills. Hona is expecting to raise $15,000 for the shelter. Proceeds will go towards maintaining the building, food, and veterinary care. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. A water main leak caused problems for the town of Woodstock. <laughs> Crews from the town were called to the campus at daybreak Wednesday. After arriving, they found water spewing from the ground. The pavement was removed so crews could get to the break. This meant students and staff had difficulty getting into and out of the parking lot. Work crews with Bell Alliance and MB Power were also called as a precaution. No homes or businesses were without water. The leak was fixed later that night. It's midterm and exam time and students in Woodstock have had an opportunity to learn better study habits. Student counselor Andrea Reed recently hosted a seminar on how to study effectively. It's not simply how often you do it, it's how you do it. For more information at your campus, visit your student counselor. More than 200,000 grade 9 students across Canada were on the job Wednesday. Take Our Kids to Work Day is a national initiative meant to help students understand the importance of staying in school. They may also appreciate what their parents do for a living. It's basically just like a program that uh, lets the kids see what it's like for, like, what their parents do for a job, to see what it's like in a regular working day. NBCC instructor Blaine Tompkins brought his son Ryan to class. He says the program also shows kids there is more to life than what they see in high school. I, I think it's good that the, that the kids are able to see what it's really like. Um, I think that sometimes they get into a, an idea that their high school um, is kind of what it's like for them when they go into the workforce and it's uh, not necessarily like that. Take Our Kids to Work Day began in 1994 in Toronto and now includes all provinces and territories. Sometimes, staying calm when in stressful situations is a lot more difficult than it seems. In this editorial, Ethan W. Hazlitt lays out a new perspective. Are you having trouble managing your workload? If so, just chill out. I know everybody has 101 things to do right now in the moment. But panicking isn't going to help the situation. I always see people running around, not knowing what to do, and then they get in a really bad mood. And that puts everyone else in a bad mood too. You just need to calm down and ask yourselves a few questions. What do you have to do? And more importantly, what has to be done first? Then just wait a second, chill, and then do that first step. And don't worry about the other steps, because if you think about them too much, it's just going to hinder you and slow you down. And after that, take time, go get lunch. You deserve it, you need it, and you can work better on a full stomach. So remember, just chill. Just chill out. But don't forget, you still have to do that work. Just a couple of reminders. Sunday, November 6th, is the time to turn your clocks back an hour. And next Friday is Remembrance Day. That's our show for today. To submit your story ideas, email us at jschoolnbcc at gmail.com. And to see more of our stories, visit our website at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.